strange thing. And some guys, some guys like Dorian Yates, they get out of bodybuilding and oh, then yeah. they become healthy. I commend guys like that yeah. so much who had, because it's one thing to realize something is unhealthy and fix it. But when your entire persona is built around this physique and you're like superhuman to watch it literally disintegrate and be mentally okay with it right that takes like a very strong like willpower in my opinion but it, it's a shift of perception and consciousness right because yeah. you, you can no longer think of yourself as this gorilla you yeah. have to think of yourself as a normal human i'm a normal human now like dorian has a great perspective he's a really interesting guy have you ever talked to him no i've seen your episodes with he him. was great I really enjoyed talking to him. He's super down to earth, really easy to talk to. And, yeah. you know, he basically, uh, his mindset was when he was a bodybuilder, he was going to work harder than anybody. He was just going to get fucking massive, just absolutely enormous and huge, crush everybody. And then when he was done, he's like, all right, fuck this. I'm done with this. Like, yeah, it's wild be being able to shift now. your perspective that yeah. dramatically where you're like, the physique is just for competing. Yep. And. You can't get away from the comments of people saying you're smaller too. Like even right. even for me in my comment section, if it's you know the difference between me at peak versus now, it's oh Derek, you stopped caring about muscle. Oh, what happened? Yeah. And it's like it's not like I was a bodybuilder level competing at a, you know a pro level or anything like that. And he was literally the pinnacle of the sport. 260, 70, fucking shredded. He was one of the biggest ever. Yeah, he and he was lost. so massive. Yeah, and he lost like 70 pounds or something yeah. insane. He looks like a normal athlete now. Yeah. Like a normal guy who's athletic. Yeah. But he's he's got a lot of like muscle problems, joint problems, shoulder pro his shoulders are kind of fucked. It's like these guys, mm. they all get the worst I've ever seen though is Ronnie Coleman. Oh, yeah, because who's done. a yeah. fucking great guy. He's the best. He's got a great attitude about it all. Yeah. Like, uh, always, at, like, you know, they always say, Ronnie, would you do anything differently? Yeah, I'd lift more weights. Yeah. Like, he's, yeah. he doesn't have any re regrets at all. Yeah. And I think he said at one point in time, I forget the number of actual back surgeries, but it's very high. It's more than ten, I believe. Yeah. And his whole back, his whole back is essentially fused, and there's massive scar tissue and inflammation. He has trouble walking. You know, the the nerves are all like impinged, and it's all fucked. Yeah, that's the brutal thing too. When you get to that size, is progressive overload. You get to a point where you're forced to use weights that are so exorbitant to overload because you're way too strong that it's impossible to not literally fucking dismantle your entire infrastructure while you're supporting those loads because yeah. you're though you're squatting you know hundreds and hundreds of pounds benching hundreds and hundreds doing this and this and like your bones can't right. just you know just adapt and be totally fine and your discs oh your yeah tendons and the the cartilage yeah. in your shoulders and the, your labrums all everything's getting destroyed yeah it's so crazy yeah. And they can't fucking help it. They just fucking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that Rich Piana guy. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a wild one, right? The guys who try to retain their size going like 40 plus mm -hmm. almost always end up kicking the can yeah. real quick. He was big. Yeah. And weird, right? Because he's not really a body, a professional bodybuilder. He right? tried competing to become a pro, and he just doesn't have the genetics from a structural aspect. So even though he's a massive fucking dude on stage, he doesn't, you know, have the proportions, the symmetry, et cetera, to make it far. But he just loves, loved the lifestyle so much that, and his brand was built around it. Again, the problem of being one of these guys right. like The Rock, where your entire persona is built around your presence. And you just end up retaining it into an age where you can no longer support the drug use, the body weight, et cetera. And yeah. Like, what else do you do when you're a 300-pound tattooed-up bodybuilder guy? Yeah. And everybody's like, dude, you're a freak. You're a freak. Like, yeah. everything was he was a freak. Yeah. You know? Is there videos of him competing? Yeah. If you type in uh, Rich Piana uh, bodybuilding competition, you'll probably find him competing. I think it was like a California state show or something. Was he all tattooed up back then? or was Not he... as much, no. And he didn't have the PMMA injections yet. What's he... that mean? He got, like, implants in his arms, I think. What? Yeah. Oh, so that's him bodybuilding. Yeah. He looked pretty fucking good. Yeah, if you click uh, that Reddit one, second to the left in the second row, that one, like, that's pretty solid, dude. Yeah, yeah. man. He looked great. Yeah. But then if you uh, look well, at more- what's, But what's wrong with his genetics there? That looks like- Um, well, <gasps> if, when he's on stage, it's just, uh, you know, it could be conditioning, could be the lack of a developed back- like, there's a million reasons why you might not go pro, but that's his arms, you know, post 
implants in Mexico, apparently. So he put implants in his arms. Yeah, apparently. What what kind of implants does someone like? Go down to that lower right. Yeah, that one right there. What's going on with it? It was arms? called a PMMA, I think. 